Assalamu alaikum. This is me, Natasha Solangi, once again here in front of you with another lecture. Lecturer, obviously, I'm lecturer in zoology and currently working at Government Girls Degree College, Jacobabad. So, you would be astonished to see these pictures in the outset. Could you guess anything from these pictures that what today's topic is about? In a picture, you can see some flasks covered with lids. In another picture, you can see a glass containing some newly grown plants. And I'm sure when you see these pictures, you will guess that these pictures are taken in a laboratory and there is some sort of experiment performed in them. So, if you have guessed the topic, you are right. And if you haven't, so, let me tell you that what today's topic is about. So, today's topic is about tissue culture or micro propagation. This topic belongs to chapter number 9 and the chapter's name is biotechnology. Obviously, subject zoology and the class is second year. So, let me tell you the introduction of this topic. This tissue culturing actually is in vitro cultivation of organs, tissues and cells at defined temperature using an incubator and supplemented with a medium containing cell nutrients and growth factor is collectively known as tissue culture or micro propagation. Let me clear first word here that what in vitro is. Actually in vitro means at laboratory outside any body of any organism. So, this is in vitro cultivation of organs, tissues and cells. Tissues can be cultivated at laboratory outside any body of uh, any organism. Organs can be cultivated and cells too can be cultivated at laboratory. But temperature should be maintained there and hence an incubator is needed there for the proper growth of that culture and obviously that culture is supplemented with a medium containing cell nutrients. Obviously, if you are charming an animal at your home or if you are having some plants at your home, you would provide them with nutrients. If you are timing any cat, if you are timing any dog, you would provide them nutrients for their maintenance and growth. Same here we are likewise timing cells, tissues or organs and we have to provide them with nutrition and growth factor. So these all collectively are known as tissue culture or micro propagation. Micro means small, as you know very well. Propagation means spread. It is spread of small things like cells and other things and their growth. So, uh, this topic, this introduction is clear from this picture. This tissue culture growing means growing single cells from a plant. In this picture, you can see a plant, a fully grown plant on the one side and few cells are taken from that plant in a dish on the other side. So obviously these cells are put in a dish for growth. Besides that introduction, there are a few lines that are important about the topic. So, Tissue culture basically is a method of biological research in which fragments of tissues from an animal or plant are transferred to an artificial environment in which they can continuously survive and function. The cultured tissue may be cell or part of an organ. So it is method of biological research. Obviously, uh, anything that, uh, that you are performing at laboratory is a research. So, this is actually a research in which fragments of tissues from an animal or plant are transferred to an artificial environment because 
the fragments, the pieces that we are taking from the plant or animal are taken from their parent plant and that is natural. But afterwards, those parts, those fragments are kept in laboratory in an artificial environment where they have to grow, in which they can continue to survive and function. The cultured tissue may be cell or part of an organ. So we can grow cell, we can grow any organ or anything. Requirements of tissue culture. Obviously, I have mentioned earlier that that artificial environment should be controlled. So what are the special needs? What are the special requirements that tissue culturing needs? So these are the requirements. The first one is sterile working conditions. It means working conditions should be free from any sort of microorganisms, viruses, bacteria. They should be free from any microorganism and the environment or working conditions should be sterile, pure clean sarin. The second one is performed in tissue culture hood. In tissue culture hood, whole environment is or should be suitable for tissue culturing. The third one is filtered air in surroundings to overcome risks of contamination. When we are growing anything, outside organism's body at laboratory level. So it is at the risk of con contamination. So it should be preserved, it should be saved from any sort of contamination. The fourth one is obviously proper nutrients as I have told you earlier that proper nutrients are needed for anything that you are taming, that you are having at your home or at your laboratory. If culture grown as single layer of cells must be grown on glass or plastic surface. Now this is the fourth most requirement. This is the most important requirement that if culture grown as single layer of cells must be grown on glass or plastic surface. For a single layer of cells there should be glass or plastic surface and if grown as suspension so it must be grown in liquid or semi-solid medium or any gel-like medium. So these are the requirements that tissue culture demands. What do cells do in culture? Now this is the basic question that rises in the mind of any listener. That what do cells do that are kept for culturing? So the first step that is they multiply obviously. We know that cells multiply, there is always mitosis or meiosis in them. So the cells that are kept for growth, they multiply. The second step is obviously change size when a thing or anything, any cell, anything multiplies, it changes its size. It doubles its size, it increases its size, size. The third thing is change form. Obviously, when it changes its size, it changes its form too. The fourth thing is change function. Means it, the functions that it is performing at low level, it will not perform at high level. It will surely improve its functions as suppose a child when he grows or when she grows. When child grows, child doesn't know to speak, child doesn't, doesn't know to talk, child doesn't know to walk, child doesn't know to think, child doesn't know to somehow react. But when that child grows, with passing time or with the passage of time, child improves functions. Child knows to speak, child knows to walk, 
child knows to react on the things, child knows to react on mother's name, on father's name. So, obviously, when tissues are kept for culturing, they change their function is the growth. The fifth thing is they show special activity. It depends now, it depends on solely on tissue or cell. That what sort of cell or which part of cell or which part uh, or which cell of which body part you are uh, placing in the laboratory for culturing. Suppose if muscle cells are cultured, they contact because it is their main function. Their main function is the is to contract. When muscles contract, then our body moves. So, muscle cells contract, they show their special activity. If uh, you are uh, keeping other cells, other fragments, other parts, they will show their special function when they grow. Now, procedure. We had started that what do cells do in culture, but how cells do them? At outset, a tiny sample of tissue is dispersed. First of all, we have to check a tiny sample of tissue that is dispersed on the flask, tube or plate. But that flask, tube or plate should not be empty. It should have the culture then that sample is incubated at a moderate temperature means moderate means the temperature that is suitable for the sample note sterile conditions are maintained to prevent contamination with microorganisms obviously it has been mentioned above that sterile conditions should be maintained because tissue culturing needs sterile conditions Cultures are often started from single cell, resulting in production of uniform biological population called clones. So, everything starts from single cell. Life starts from single cell. We have been uh, studying that since we start, started studying cell. We knew that everything, every life, whether it's the life of a plant, it's the life of an animal, it's the life of human being, it starts from a single cell. Same here, cultures are often started from single cell, resulting in production of uniform biological population called clones and in result, we get a population of cells and we call them clones. Now you know very well that what clones are, these are the exact copies of their parent cells. Time duration is 10 to 14 days, but we are not stuck to 10 to 14 days. This time duration is variable. Sometimes tissue stack 4 to 8 weeks, weeks. sometimes tissue stack 6 to 10 weeks. It depends on the sample that you are selecting for your culture. It depends on the species. It depends on the organism. It depends on what you are taking for culturing. So, time duration is variable. Keep it in your mind. Now, references that who have culture tissues and what tissues can be cultured. In this regard, the first one is German zoologist Wilhelm Rox. But it was an attempt, it was an attempt, in that attempt, a German zoologist Wilhelm Rox cultivated tissue from chick embryo in a warm salt solution. It was an attempt. Later in 1907, now look at the Look at the year 1907, it is the oldest one in the 20th century. In 1907, an American zoologist Rose G. Harrison succeeded in growth of nerve cell process in clotted lymph. Now, Wilhelm Rogues attempted, but Rose G. Harrison succeeded. 
So, these were two achievements that were made in zoology. Now, the third one is made in botany. So, who was a pioneer scientist? He was Professor F. C. Stewart of Cornell University of States. Showed that mature cell removed from a carrot and placed in a switchable culture solution could be stimulated to start dividing again to provide new carrot. Those cells were totipotent. Now we are coming towards the word totipotent that word totipotent cell is or word totipotency is we are coming to it afterwards. First look at the picture that is showing the tissue culturing in a carrot. So, this is the whole carrot mature plant and its roots what wash carrot roots tap roots first its roots are washed then it is broken down into three or four pieces a coke is inserted in the carrot but core is core should be visible cut core and place in petal dish afterwards core is cut and it is placed in a petal dish so Paste disc on callus initiation medium. Callus forms in 4 to 6 weeks, transfer to root development medium, then roots are developed in petri dish. Now, look at the procedure. We have always misconception in our minds that roots can only develop under the ground in clay, in mud, but no. Roots can also develop in a petri dish in vitro at laboratory. So, afterwards when roots are developed, these baby carrots are transferred to the soil for further growth. So, this is was this was the successful tissue culturing in carrot. Now, come towards the totipotency or totipotent cells. Totipotency basically is the ability or potentiality of a single cell to grow into new organism in searchable conditions or we can say in controlled conditions even when mature and specialized like spores and zygotes. So, this is potentiality of a single cell means if cell has potentiality to grow into new organism, we can call that cell a totipotent cell if it has the potentiality or ability to grow. So, conditions should be controlled, suitable for the growth of the plant even when matured and specialized. Conditions should be maintained even the plant or animal is matured and specialized like spores and zygotes. Now, these are the two examples. A spores and zygotes example is illustrated for totipotency because these cells are totipotent. They have ability to grow. So, spores and zygotes are totipotent cells. Now, you can see totipotency in the blue image. Uh, X plant, its part is taken, it is placed in a box and it has the ability to grow and the last box you can see totipotency in the plant, it, it is growing. Now, merits. Obviously, everything has merits and demerits too. So, tissue culturing has also some merits and some demerits too. Now, you would be thinking that how tissue culturing has demerits. Yes, it has demerits, but first look at the merits. So, the first merit is plants with desired characteristics can sometimes be multiplied rapidly, producing many identical copies of the same plant. If you want a plant to grow rapidly, to get the results rapidly, you can do a uh, tissue culturing or you can put that plant in laboratory and tissue culturing. You will surely reap the results very soon. This is a merit. The second one is cells can be genetically modified and grown into whole plants known as transgenic plants using tissue culture. Cells can be genetically modified. We can get the cells of our choice. We can change their DNA. We can 
combine the DNAs of two plants so that we can get a transgenic plant. So that we can get a transgenic plant using tissue culture. Tissue culture takes up little space and little time. Obviously, it is performed at library. It takes a little time as I have mentioned 4 to 8 weeks or 6 to 10 weeks, 12 to 14 days. It is variable. It is variable according to the species, the part you are taking. So, it takes little space and little time. The fourth one is organisms are grown in disease free condition. So, conditions obviously are sterile, disease free without the entrance of viruses, bacteria. So, organisms are free from any risk of contamination. Number five, uniform growth and increased yield. Obviously, we will uh, get uniform growth and increased yield. Number six, round the year planting possible as seedlings are made valuable throughout the year. So, in this way, we can get rid of seasonal planting, like we get some vegetables and fruits in a particular season, some fruits you can get in just winters, some vegetables you can get just, you can get just in winters and some uh, fruits and vegetables you can get just in summers. So, this is the merit of tissue culturing that we can get any vegetable throughout the year we want. Now, I am not talking about the taste because it is uh, always seen, it is always observed that the vegetables that are perfectly made for summer, they can grow in winter too, but they have different taste. Different means they are somewhat not as tasty as they are in their particular season like some fruits too. So, here we are talking about just their availability not their taste. Number 7, up to 98 percent plants bear bunches means it is guaranteed that if we are culturing any tissue, so up to 98 percent plants bear bunches and they grow and become adult. Now, come towards the demerits of tissue culture. What are the demerits of tissue culture? Number one, it is laborious and costs much money. It is laborious because it needs much of time, it needs attention and it costs much money because you have to uh, keep sterile, uh, sterile, in, uh, sterile environment, you have to provide them with proper nutrients. If you are growing plants in usual manner in mud, in clay, you have to just water them, but here they need proper attention. So, number two, reduced cell to cell interaction. Here cell to cell interaction is reduced, means cells cannot interact with them. Number three, procedure needs special attention and is time consuming. Obviously, it needs attention, proper attention and is time consuming. Means everything grows with time, but you properly do not have to sit or see the plants that you are growing in clay or in mud in pure forms. But here you have to give your much of the time, so it is time consuming. If precautions at early stage not taken, infection may continue through generations. Suppose if the environment is not sterile, if the cultured plant is attacked by bacteria or virus, if it has any anomaly, it has any abnormality, so this will lead through the generations. Number five, decreased genetic variability. We have no chance of any genetic variability. We have no new varieties here. Number six, there may be error in the identity of organisms after culture. Yeah, there may be error. If you cannot give them proper time, if you cannot give them proper nutrients, there can be an error in the identity 
of organisms aquaculture okay suppose sometimes you are growing plant you are growing carrot plant in vitro condition but you cannot identify them when they are going that either is carrot or anything else so sometimes there is identity problems for them this is also a demerit of tissue culturing again thanks for the love thanks for watching my lecture if you have any question there is the comment section you can comment your question in the comment section i'll certainly reply it thanks